So here we're looking at the equine hind limb. We come back here to see where we were cut. We we're cut on the femur just below the third trochanter. We can see here we have the biceps femoris muscle still pretty much as a whole. Then we have the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, the gracilis. This little bit here is going to be the sartorius. Okay, so cranial to the semimembranosus, we have the adductor muscle. Then here we've got the quadricep femoris with the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, vastus lateralis, and rectus femoris. Remember that all these muscles are extensors of the stifle, but only the rectus femoris crosses the hip, so it's going to be a flexor of the hip. The sartorius is another flexor of the hip. We look here, we can see, here's where the patella is. And we can see the three patellar tendons. We've got the medial, the middle, and the lateral patellar tendon. Now the patella sits up in here, and this portion here extending out to the medial patellar tendon is fibrocartilage. Okay, And so it is this spot right here that when the patella is locked, it sits up on top of the medial trochlear ridge. Okay. So let's flip it out over here on the lateral surface. So here we can see better that biceps femoris muscle. Reflect it here to view our, me, our gastrocnemius muscle. Deep to that gastrocnemius muscle is going to be the superficial digital flexor. Notice that we can trace the tendon back around up here and then on down. So that's a superficial digital flexor tendon. The common calcanean tendon in the horse has the gastrocnemus, the superficial digital flexor, the biceps femoris and the semitendinosus, but does not have the component of the gracilis like the dog and the bovine do. Now, we have a bursa, often subcutaneous right here, the subcutaneous calcaneum bursa. That becomes inflamed, then we have capped hock. We have another bursa that sits between the superficial digital flexor and the gastrocnemius tendon, that's the intertendinous bursa. And then one that sits between the gastrocnemius tendon and the tuber calcanei, that would be the subtendinous bursa. These two bursas actually communicate to, with each other, but they're often considered as separate bursas. Now remember we have a fibrous band within our superficial digital flexor, which is part of our reciprocal apparatus. Let's look here at all these muscles. So the most cranial lateral muscle here is the long digital extensor. Deep to that, We've got our pronius tertius, which is a fibrous band. Okay, in the bovine, it's going to be a nice muscle. So this pronius tertius is also part of our reciprocal apparatus. And then we have deep to that the cranial tibial muscle. Okay. Coming down here, we have our Cronius tertius that has a lateral branch and a dorsal branch. Our cranial tibial is going to come up under it, and then it's going to have a medial branch and the dorsal branch as well. That medial branch is known as a cunean tendon, and it has a bursa, cunean bursa, that sits under here. Okay, sometimes that we get a bursitis of that, and at one time, they would cut that to relieve that pressure. Also with spavin, they might cut that to relieve pressure on the tarsus. But the instability that then ensues, you got to weigh out if that's really worth it. Okay. So we come laterally here. We do not have a pronius longus muscle like we do in the bovine. Here we have the lateral digital extensor coming down and fusing with the tendon of the long digital extensor. 
notice down here we also have a muscle fusing with the long digital extensor. This is the short digital extensor muscle. So all of these muscles here, the cranial lateral muscles, are going to be innervated by the peroneal nerve. We can see the peroneal nerve coming in right here. And it's going to have a deep branch, which is going to do most of these muscles. The superficial branch is going to give a branch off to this lateral digital extensor and then continue on down. That deep branch is also going to continue on down across the tarsus. We will see it branch about the tarsus into a lateral and medial dorsal metatarsal nerve. That lateral one is going to run with the artery right here, the dorsal metatarsal artery 3. The medial one may have a similar course on the more medial aspect, but sometimes we see it running just parallel to the extensor tendons. These nerves are going to be our primary innervation to our fetlock in the hind limb. The more plantar aspect is going to be picked up by our medial lateral plantar metatarsal nerves. These dorsal metatarsal nerves are also going to be the primary innervation to most of the dorsal digit. We will have dorsal branches from our, our plantar digital nerves. Okay, and then our plantar digital nerves are going to do most of the plantar aspect. Okay, they're going to be coming from our tibial nerve. So our tibial nerve, easier seen on the medial aspect here. Here it is. The tibial nerve is going to branch into a medial and a lateral plantar nerve. Here we can trace the medial on down the lateral just as the lateral palmar had a deep branch the lateral plantar has a deep branch and that gives rise to the plantar metatarsal nerves which as I said is going to do a little bit of the plantar aspect of the fetlock joint it's going to do a little bit of the dorsal digit but not much okay and so then we see the plantar nerves coming down becoming our plantar digital with dorsal branches. Okay, so let's come back to our muscles now. On the medial side, we see more of our deep digital flexor muscle. There's some more of it here. This is the medial head of that. Its tendon does not go through the tarsal tunnel, but in fact attaches to the rest of the tendon down in here. Let's see if we can find where that occurs. Right in here. So that little strip right there is from this medial. Okay. And then this muscle here attaching to the tibia is going to be our popliteus muscle. Okay. Now this medial head of the deep digital flexor is a good landmark for our caudal tibial artery. That's going to come down do a nice little S shape here and join our caudal saphenous. We'll continue as the caudal saphenous. We'll then join with the our perforating tarsal artery and then we'll branch into our medial lateral plantar arteries as well as our medial lateral plantar metatarsal arteries all of which are going to join our main supply down in here now let's go back and talk about our main supply to the limb so our femoral artery is coming down it's going to give a distal caudal femoral which we see branches here going to the gastroc and to the hamstrings and then it becomes the popliteal artery here. So our popliteal artery then is going to come in. It'll branch into our caudal and our cranial tibial. Our cranial tibial will then be found deep to our cranial tibial muscle here. 
So there's that cranial tibial artery. Remember when it comes down and it gets to the tarsus, it then becomes the dorsal pedal. It's going to then have a perforating tarsal branch, which I believe is right there, and then continue as our dorsal metatarsal artery 3. Okay, as that comes along here, it's going to run along the splint bone, and then just before the end of the splint bone, it will go plantarly and branch into our medial and lateral plantar digital arteries. Okay, just before it branches, that's where the plantar metatarsal arteries join, and then usually just after, such as right in here, our plantar arteries are going to join. And so those are the collateral circulation to our main supply, which is coming from this dorsal metatarsal artery 3. Okay. So here we have our superficial digital flexor, our deep digital flexor. Now, where the superficial attaches to the tuber calcanea, that kind of acts as a check ligament. Sometimes we do find a check ligament with the deep, but not commonly. And then we do have the suspensory ligament just like we had in the front limb. 